Okay, as we go through this, you look at the board every now and then, you'll see that it makes sense, at least I hope so, okay? Uh, we always try to uh, give the, 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 the Bible books and what was going on during this time, and then when Christ came to the earth, the Gospels, what was going on, and then Acts after Christ ascends with the 12 apostles, what was going on, and then we have... Apostle Paul being saved and what's going on today. And then one day, of course, we'll go up in the rapture. Amen. You can celebrate me home when I go there. Amen. And then he once again deals with his people Israel. Okay. So as we go through this, the title of my message this morning is Does Rightly Dividing the Apostle Paul Belittle Christ? There's a lot of people who think that just because we promote uh, Paul's books that we try to elevate him above Jesus Christ. And of course that's the devil's lie. He tries to get people not to listen to what Paul has written. Always remember this, what Paul wrote were Christ's words. <laughs> uh, you know, they're just different. Uh, this is Christ's words according to the earth when he was on earth. This is Christ's words according to heaven. Heavenly words that God gave to the Apostle Paul. Uh, today, though, the majority of people, they still turn their back on Paul and the mystery revelation given to him. Paul says this, it's not about personalities, it's about what God's scripture says and who he appoints as his spokesperson. Just like he, he appointed people back here, he appointed Paul as one of his spokespeople and spokesperson. Uh, it states in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm going to give you a lot of verses, so if you write them down, you can look them up later on. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transformed to myself, to Apollos, for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. And then he says in verse 16, Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of who? Of me. How could he say that? 1 Corinthians 14, 37 says this, And if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. You see that? Paul's words are what? Are God's word the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, he's not belittling Christ, he's uplifting Christ and honoring grace when he does this. 1 Thessalonians 4.15, the first part of that verse, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Not me, I'm nobody, but what I'm saying is everything. I'm the spokesperson that you should be listening to now because these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But today, most of Christendom, they rebel against God's word, against God's apostle, Paul, for today. It was Paul, by revelation of Christ, that was revealed to Paul, the gospel of the grace program for today. That's for us today. Now, just notice these verses, Romans 2, 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of, Jesus, uh, of men by Jesus Christ, how? According to my gospel but who gave him that gospel Jesus Christ gave him that gospel okay it states in Romans 16 25 now to him that is a part to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was revealed to Paul right which was kept secret since the world began Nobody knew about it until it was revealed to Paul. These truths were not known back here. These were new truths personally revealed to the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 2.8 says this, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Not according to the twelve's message, but according to my and the new truth that God has revealed to me. Amen? Galatians 2, 2. And I went up by how? Revelation, the personal appearing of Christ telling him to. 
and communicated unto them, the twelve, that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Now let me just say something. If he preached, if Paul preached the same message as the twelve, why did he have to go up there and explain his message to them? That does not make sense, does it? Galatians 2, 7 says this here. But contrary wise, when they, the twelve, saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. God revealed to Peter the gospel of the circumcision. He, re he revealed the gospel of the mystery to the apostle Paul. Okay? Romans eleven thirteen. 13. Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. You never hear the twelve saying that. Huh? Only Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. The twelve went to one Gentile. Peter went to Cornelius. And that was to help Paul, I believe, later on. But they went to the Jews. Only Paul is our apostle that's for today. Then Galatians 1, 11 and 12, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Man didn't know about the gospel Paul preached. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ left heaven to reveal to Paul the new gospel message. Amen? Ephesians 3, 3, he says this, How that by revelation he, Christ, made known unto me the mystery. This whole program here was revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ himself. Now think about this. Without Paul and his writings, we would be absent 13 books of the Bible. Now think about that. 13 books, those particular books that Paul wrote, we'd have no salvation by grace through faith alone. We'd have no justification apart from the law. We'd have no total forgiveness of sins through the gospel, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We'd have no Jew and Gentile equally in one body, the one new man. We'd have no temporary fall of Israel. And the reason that's important, that allows for a permanent fall of Israel and that allows the church replacement theology. The church replaces Israel. The church has not replaced Israel. God will deal with Israel one day in the future once again. And also, there will be no heavenly position. There will be no rapture. There will be no spirit baptism into Christ and so on. Without the 13 books of Paul, we'd be under the 12 apostles kingdom program. We would be bound by the signs and wonders. We would have to go to Jerusalem first to fulfill the commission. Jerusalem's first, okay? Uh, and then our last day's message would be repent, be water baptized for the remission of sins, then receive the Holy Spirit, and then follow the law. That would be our message for today. We'd have to preach the cross as a horrible murder, not as good news. We'd have to follow the twelves and disciples examples by selling all that we have and putting it in a pot and distribute it to every person that has need. Acts 2 45 says this here. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And that was at Pentecost by the way. You want to go back to Pentecost? You sell everything you have. Acts 4, 34 and 35. Did I give you that one? Thank you. Neither was there any among them that lacked or as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of their things that were sold. And verse 35. And laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. That's what we would be practicing today. That's not the way Paul says we are to do today. But if we're under that program, that's what we would do. Uh, we would make salvation of the Jews. We would not even understand the cross's accomplishments if we remained under that program. Luke chapter 18, verse 31, Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, that all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. 
and the third day he shall rise again. Praise God, good news, right? What's the next verse? And they understood none of these things. And it was even hid from them. Hello? They had no clue the cross's accomplishment or the resurrection's accomplishment. That means if you don't have Paul's gospels explaining those truths, you would never know those truths. Amen? But Paul, he is God's spokesperson for our dispensation of grace. Just make a quick little comparison of Moses, the great spokesperson for Israel, and Paul. Moses wrote five books. Paul wrote 13. But Moses' books are, are quite a bit longer in, in length. And uh, just notice this. Paul refers to himself by name 30 times. Moses, 600 plus times. Paul refers to himself by personal pronouns several hundred times. Moses mentions himself by personal pronouns several thousand times. Why did Moses put such emphasis upon himself? Did that belittle Christ? Did, was he full of pride? Was it self-importance? No, not ever. Numbers 12.3 says this here. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were up on the... He's the meekest man in the world. Not full of pride, okay? But Moses was the chosen man whom God committed the dispensation of the law, the word, its message for that day. And by the way, when Moses was given the law, it was added to the Abrahamic covenant. So for Israel, they have the Abrahamic covenant, plus now they have Moses' law when God gave it to Moses there. Now, when Christ came on the scene, Christ added to the Abrahamic covenant he added to Moses' law, and Christ, he, he, said, he added here and offered the kingdom was at hand. It was near. He added, that's what he added to the Abrahamic covenant and the law's covenant. Jesus held up Moses' position and authority under the law. So likewise, Paul said of himself, he was the chief of sinners. Paul said of himself, I'm the least of the least of all the saints. Paul wasn't on a prideful eagle trip here. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9 and 10. For I am the least of the apostles that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He is full of remorse. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. And because of that grace, he worked all the harder for God. But God had committed unto Paul God's grace program that's for today. First, uh, Romans uh, 16 again. Now to him that is power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to what? The revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. And then the next verse. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. And so we see that Paul is the one that God wanted to be the spokesperson for the body of mystery for today. He states in Colossians 1, 25, 26, where have I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. God, as with Moses, gave Paul his position, his authority, so that his message, since he's an apostle of God, would be heard. Not only that, so it would not be confused with the twelves, the twelves message that had gone on previously. Their message had law, circumcision, baptism. It was a prophecy program. It was to Israel. On and on it goes. So Paul's message is completely different from that. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. 
Today, it's faith alone in the gospel alone. Nothing else. We're not under law. We're under grace. That's the new message that Paul was given. Amen? (laughs) And by the way, if Paul preached the same message as the 12, why Paul? Couldn't the 12 carry the message out? Why Paul? Because God had something different, new, and a mystery that he wanted to reveal through another apostle so that the 12 can continue being faithful to the people of Israel. Amen? Now, how did Moses receive his message to Israel? Deuteronomy 4 verse 5 says this here. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do, you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. And verse 14, And the Lord commanded me at the time to teach you statutes and judgments. See, God told Moses, Moses told the Israelites. Do you see that? Uh, Exodus 33, verse 11, God says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua and so on. God personally appeared to Moses, taught him face to face what he wanted Moses to say. Moses was chosen to be his spokesperson to the people, the nation of Israel. Likewise, Paul, he did not appoint himself. Paul, he did not invent his message. His message was given to him by direct revelation of Christ face-to-face, telling him what to teach, what to say about the body of Christ, the gospel of grace, and so on. We read it a while ago, Galatians 1, 11 and 12, but I certify, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Then he goes on and states, for I neither received of the man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation, face-to-face, personally. Huh? You see that? Just like Moses, Paul. Yet how many today disrespect, disregard Paul and his 13 books he wrote? Always remember when Christ came. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. You know it well. These 12 Jesus sent forth, commanded them, say, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, hello, and into the city of the Samaritans, half Jew, half Gentile, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? 1524 of Matthew says this here. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, do you get that? Let that sink in. When Christ came on the earth, he was dealing with Israel. He wasn't dealing with the body of Christ in the mystery program whatsoever. That was reserved for later for Paul because he knew Israel would reject him. His message was the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Yet in most churches in Christendom, they want to obey Moses, Jesus, and the 12, the earthly ministry that was to Israel. You talk to people today, says, well, I just want to be like Jesus. I want to live Jesus. Matter of fact, I saw a fellow on TV the other day, and uh, he said, we told our church, all we're going to do is go by the red letter edition. The red words that Jesus spoke. He said, man, the spirit began to move and all that. We begin to have a move of God. And Just Jesus' red letter edition there in the Gospels. Okay? But there's a problem with that. Romans 15, 8 says this. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the, who's the circumcision? The Jews. Is that you? Is that me? Is that the body of Christ? No, it's not. Hey, leave that verse up there just for a second if you would. And notice when he came, what did he come to do? To the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. The Abrahamic covenant for the land, the Davidic, Davidic, however you say that. His uh, covenant for the throne. Then you have Moses, the law, 
all of that. Let me ask you. You say, well, I just want to follow Jesus. Let me ask you something. Do you keep all the commandments? It was under law. Do you live the Sermon on the Mount? You know, you don't get forgiveness from God unless you forgive everybody else. Or if you pray, it's going to be answered. If you seek, ask, seek, knock. Uh, do you obey the Great Commission? How come you're not in Jerusalem? How come you're not in Judea first? Do you offer sacrifices? Do you sell everything, give it away? Do you obey? Do you obey what God says for you to get ready for the tribulation so you can go into the tribulation and then go into the kingdom? Do you practice the miraculous signs and so on? Jesus Christ did. And if you're not doing that, you can't follow Jesus. Right. Earthly ministry. Now you can follow his heavenly ministry and what he says for you. Okay? God said to Moses, Deuteronomy 4 2. How many of you follow me? Okay? This is kind of a teaching lesson message. Okay? Sometimes we need to grow up. Amen? Huh? Hey, Amen. We need to grow up and learn a little bit. Amen? Instead of just tickling your emotions from time to time. Amen? Amen. I wish I'd say what I meant. Now, notice. <laughs> you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Now, that's what he told him. Now, his, di his disciples, the Lord, the apostle 12, James says this in James 2.10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, You know, to say you're going to follow that, that is denying the finished work of Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Uh, to do that. Thank God that God raised up another apostle after Israel rejected him. He sets them aside temporarily, thank God, but they're set aside. They'll be resurrected over here. But thank God he reached down and he touched another sinner just like us. And it was all of grace. <laughs> And he touched Saul of Tarsus who became Paul. Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.13, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Because the message now is not the same as it used to be, you need to listen to my words. Don't depart from what I am sharing with you because this is for you right now. Your salvation, your sanctification, the second coming is different than from back here. All of that. Listen to me now. I honor Christ because I'm speaking what Christ told me to tell you. Amen? And it's disobedient to place ourselves under the authority of Moses. Now get this under the authority of Jesus' earthly teaching while it was under law. Mark 1, 43, 44. And he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away and saith unto him, See, thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, that was the law, by the way, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for testimony unto them. Follow the law. That's Jesus' earthly teaching. Matthew 3.15, Jesus says this about his baptism. Jesus answering John the Baptist, saying unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What is all righteousness? The law. It states in Matthew 5.17, he says this, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That was then, but this is now. Now we're under his heavenly words given to his spokesperson, Paul, and we're not under that law. We're under grace. That's what we are to follow today. Amen? Now, when you mix these, you get in trouble. The Galatians. They were saved by grace through faith in the gospel by Paul, the preaching of that cross. Later on, they begin to add Moses' teaching. 
Jesus' earthly teaching while he was under law. And it began to create such confusion. And let me just say to you, the reason I'm even speaking this message this morning, there is so much confusion within the church of what the church believes. There are so many denominations and churches, they're off the Richter scales in what they're trying to teach people today just because they do not rightly divide the word of truth. It is chaotic out there. Am I saying they're lost? I'm not saying that. I'm saying they're teaching wrong doctrine. If they're not rightly dividing, they have to be. That's why they can write a book, The Gospel According to Jesus. Well, that was good for them, but the gospel for today is quite a bit different. Okay? As a matter of fact, when they begin to mix, Paul said this in Galatians 3.1. I'm trying to come down the stretch. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth that he had shared, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. I preached the cross to you. Somebody's bewitched you to leave that message. 5.7, he says this here. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? And most of churches and most of Christians in the day, they continue to teach the kingdom program, Jesus' earthly ministry, Pentecost, all those things that were under the Israeli program. As a result, it's led to untold confusion. Just like I said, you can't obey the commandments, you can't follow the Sermon on the Mount, you can't do this, do that, whatever, because that's not for today whatsoever. Paul's our apostle. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, 15, and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him Christ who died for them and rose again. Verse 16, wherefore henceforth, now get this, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, now get this, though we have known Christ after the flesh, his earthly ministry, We've known it, yet now henceforth know we him no more. We don't know him after his earthly ministry. Now we know him after his heavenly ministry. How many of you got that? Let me just see your hand. Amen. Amen. Now why? Romans 15, uh, Romans 15, 28 again. We said it a while ago. Uh, well, I gave you the wrong verse, but uh, that's the wrong verse. That he came to minister to the circumcision and to confirm the promises that were made unto the fathers. Amen? That's why we don't follow his earthly ministry. We follow his heavenly ministry. And who wrote his heavenly ministry? Jesus Christ through Paul, his spokesperson, 13 books out of the New Testament. Now remember this. All scripture is for us, for our learning, for our profit, but it's not all addressed to us individually. Nor is it all written about us. You always knew. Who was he writing to? When, where, what, why? That applies so much. And by the way, what happens... And I'm cutting out a, long, a large segment of my message right now. What happens when you mix the earthly message of Christ under law to the heavenly message of Christ, his heavenly message under grace? And you mix those two. Many become spiritually shipwrecked. I have verses for all these. Many have their faith overthrown. Many depart from the faith. Not lose their salvation, they just give up, they don't understand it. And here's the problem many preach and teach another Jesus. That's the problem. It states in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 and 4 But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through your subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom you have not, whom we have not preached, 
Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. You don't have to allow them to shake you up. You know the truth. Share that truth with them. Amen? Now, how does it happen? How do you mix these? Well, that's been the greatest trickery ever, what, happened on the body of Christ. It states in verses 13 and following in that same chapter, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. 14, 15, guys. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Satan has tricked the body of Christ, and he's just made it all together. I had a stepdad, and my mom would fix him a nice meal, and I don't care what she fixed him. He took a knife and a fork, and he'd chop it up and mix it all together. I saw that. I hated that. And I promised that I would never, ever do that. And that's why now I like to eat. I don't like my food touching each other now. I eat it separately after seeing that conglomeration. Huh? Is that awful? I said, why are you just going to puke? I mean, that's what. Huh? Acts 15, verse 1, here's how it's done. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 5 says this here. And these men, by the way, they're good men. But there arose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. They're believing the earthly message of Christ. That it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. But they came to a conclusion when they had their meeting, when Paul shared what had happened to Israel, his new message. In Galatians 2.9, it says this, they made their agreement. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, Paul, they gave unto me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. And now to get this, the 12 who were commanded to go to Jerusalem, uh, Judea, Samaria, and all the world, they said, we won't do that now. Now for them not to do that, they would be disobedient to God if they did not believe God had changed the program. They're not going there. They, they nipped their commission and they stayed in Israel. Amen? And Acts 21, even that late in Acts, and when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Now get this. And when they, the Jews in Jerusalem, the apostles and all of them, heard it, they glorified the Lord that God was blessing Paul with this new gospel message and said unto them, Thou seest, brother Paul, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all zealous of the law. The Jews continued on their program. It faded off the scene. After Acts 28, you never mention anymore, you go forward with the new program. Isn't that amazing? Now, just, I'm just about done. Paul said this, Galatians 1, 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Here you are, you were saved by the gospel of grace, now you're reaching back here and you're trying to add that to it. He says in verse 8, this is his warning, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have, that we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Let him die and go straight to hell because he's leading people down the wrong road. Do you understand what he just said there? Huh? First, uh, First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.16, fellas, if you guys would pull that up. How be it for this cause? I obtain mercy that in me first, I'm the first in the body of Christ, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. They didn't know 
this tremendous mystery program message whatsoever and the gospel of grace. And they were sticking back here and that's what the church does today. And you wonder why there are so many different teachings from churches all over the place. On October 31st, 1963, Korean Airline 007 from Alaska to Seoul, Korea. Unknown to them, to the crew, the computer flight navigational system was one and a half degrees in their routing. It was an error. It was too small to detect. Eventually, Soviet, they got in Soviet airspace, radar picked them up, they sent out jets, and they shot down Flight 007. All on board lost their lives. And this tragedy occurred because of being a little off course. And when we get away from Paul's teachings, that's for today, and how we are to live and our doctrine for the body of Christ, we begin to go down also. Early in aviation, they had to learn about inertia. They flew often through the clouds and the fog. The fog. They, at first, they flew by feelings and instinct. They said they could feel if the plane was banking left or right. But the problem is often they'd spiral down to their death. That's what happened to John Boy Kennedy, of course. Today, they have to rely on instruments. They have a horizontal gauge, a gyroscope line that stays level with the Earth's surface, unerringly giving indication if the wings bank left or right. Spiritually speaking, our feelings, our experience, our flesh, traditions, denominations are not reliable to guide us. Today, God uses the instrument of his word rightly dividing that is unerring. We are not to accept any other doctrines for today's body that was not given to the Apostle Paul, the doctrine of grace. He says in Acts 20, verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That's our gospel today. It's about the body of Christ, the mystery program, the gospel of grace. We don't have to follow law and ordinances and everything. Israel, prophecy, the kingdom has been set aside, postponed. We're not under law, we're under grace. It's faith alone in the gospel of loan. One day we're going up. That was all a secret, that was all a mystery. Now it was revealed to our spokesperson who is Paul. Never be ashamed of the apostle Paul. I don't care how many people criticize. Oh, you Pauline Light, Paulineites. I said, what do you mean? We believe the whole Bible. The whole Bible is profitable. It's for our learning. But we understand our doctrine comes from 13 books that Jesus Christ personally, face to face, gave to the Apostle Paul for the body of Christ, the church. Amen. Now, I'm not going to give an invitation today, okay? I just wanted to share that. That was on my heart. And I wanted to share and hope it helps a couple of you. Maybe three or four of you, okay? <laughs> Father, we love you. We love your word. We love to study it. Help us to cut it straight. Help us to rightly divide because we get so much confusion when we place ourselves under law and we begin to bring works into salvation and we begin to, to try to follow uh, the charismatic program. I know there are some good people in, in those programs. I understand that, but that's not for us right now today for our doctrine. And God, if we just would rightly divide it it would clear up so much confusion. And then we can live properly, a life that is approved by you. And our life cannot be approved by you if we're living somebody else's doctrine. We need to live our own doctrine that was given through the Apostle Paul. I pray that it sticks in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day.